Well, now that we've got this far, what to do next? Well, I know I want to get this all smoothed out because it's only Friday and they're not coming until Monday. It makes sense to go ahead and fix this uh, sheetrock where the backsplash material was. It makes sense to do that now, doesn't it? Before I pull this plywood out, that way if I spill anything, it's going to go on the old plywood. I can scrape it up, sweep it up, whatever. That could be my staging area. No sense pulling the plywood up first and then doing that because then if I drip anything or if I want to scrape anything between coats, it's all going to fall down in the cabinets and I'm going to have to take it out of the cabinets. Does that make sense? So because I've got enough time, I'm going to go ahead and fix these now first. And if you were with me, on one of the other previous episodes, I told you that the best thing to do, see, because these are broken, this has pulled the, the front edge of the sheetrock paper off, right? See, see how loose? Eh. See this paper, it's loose right there. Okay, I gotta clean that stuff off. But if you put sheetrock mud directly on top of that, it's moist and it will bubble, okay? And, um, you know, it's not going to bubble. I mean, it'll bubble if you put regular sheetrock mud. If you put quick set, it's going to bubble to a certain extent. And then when the first coat of quick set, before it dries all the way, you knock it down. And then if you get any raised bits, you scrape that off before you do the next. But I've had some pretty good luck in the past um, getting some, a spray can of sealer, just clear sealer. And then you spray a little bit on there and then it dries pretty quick. It still bubbles to a certain extent, but you'll seal that and maybe put two coats on there and you'll seal it that so then when you put your sheetrock mud and quick set on there, it doesn't bubble as much, okay? But I don't want to go to the store uh, for this little bit, okay? I got, I thought, you know what? That can of sealer is basically sealing this. What if I just took primer or paint, flat paint, and I got some flat ceiling paint left uh, from when I painted the ceilings. And I thought, what if I put that on there and use that as a primer? And I'll paint each one of these little spots. You know, the dark spots. See, these, these here pulled off the paint a little bit, but that's sheetrock mud there, okay? So I can, I can go over that and smooth over on top of that and it won't bubble. So I don't necessarily have to paint where the white bits is. I, I'm going to have to paint there, paint there, paint, paint all the dark brown spots. And then down here, I can, I can hit that too. You know, that's not really going to bubble that much, but when I got the paint out, I, I'll just go ahead and do that. And then I can use that as a sealer. Now, granted, the paint, when you put it on, it's moist, it's wet, right? So I have a feeling when I put the primer on there, it's going to bubble to a certain extent, but it's not going to bubble enough, I don't think, to, to um, have too many issues. It's not like I got that on an entire wall, let's say. It's just a small area, so I can, I can deal with these little bits, right? And when I put the sheetrock mud on, I, I've got some other stuff called Fix-It-All. And in the old days, it used to be called fix-all. And you can use that on walls, and you can use it on floors. And I use it on floor on some floors. If you saw way back, I've already used that fix-it-all here on the flooring before we installed the carpet and where I had gouges and stuff like that. And it worked out really good. So I can put that on here. And that stuff, that stuff dries hard as a rock, and it dries fast. It's almost like a quick-set material. And so when I put that on, um, when it's still wet, I can look and see if it's bubbled in area in, in uh, little bits and pieces, and then I can flatten that. Or if there's still some bubbles before I put the second coat on, I can lightly scrape off the top edge of, of the dips. Boom, 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 boom. You see what I'm saying? And, and then put the second coat on. It should be fine because they're small enough that I can get away with that. Okay, if, if I had a big, huge area, I wouldn't want to do it. Okay, I'd have to, I'd have to uh, uh, do it a different way, I think. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, get this all set up. So I'm going to go around with the putty knife and take off all the loose bits like that and, and with the sheetrock knife and clean that up before I get my paint out. So I think I'm going to do that 
next. And I just reached down there and picked up the biggest things. So I'm going to leave that down there until I pull the plywood and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, and then I'll sweep that up and I'll probably just leave that down there. Yeah, I'll leave that down there when the, when the installers come. That way they don't bugger up the bottom of that or if they drip any glue or something or caulking or whatever. I'm kind of curious to see how they're going to uh, install the sink underneath the counter because they put brackets and then, he, and then I asked the guy, oh yeah, they put a bead of silicone caulking all the way around underneath before they attach those brackets and before they line it up, blah, 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 and then, and then once the stainless steel sink comes up, then he says, oh, oh, they're going to uh, put some caulking, probably this, the same color as stainless steel. Color not clear, but something else. Yeah, right. I'll, 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 I'll believe that when I see it. But anyways, you're supposed to caulk that too. But uh, yeah, I'll sweep that up and I'll leave those pieces down there. And like I said, I had, I had this stuff. This is a second layer, just this rectangular little piece right here. Oh, I've got two, two layers here, two layers down in there. So when the guys come, they can have at it and my floor will be protected. And and plus, I can leave that down there so when the, uh, when the plumber comes, he's going to be under there working, dribbling stuff and, and all that. I'll leave that down there for him too. And where they are right here, that'll protect this from ripping or gouging or dropping any tools or anything like that. Yeah, that's what I'll do. Hey Joe, do you really have to do this good of a job? to protect everything else from getting all dusty? Yes, of course you do. We had that concrete mortar base and that stuff throws up dust. My hat, my hat is all sticky and stuff from, from the stuff and um, all my tools are dusty. This floor is super dusty, but out here, ah, difference between night and day. Look, no dust, no dust out here. And I wouldn't be surprised if there's going to be a little bit of dust here and there, but um, I'm very pleased that I don't really see much dust on this at all. See there? And that's, that's right behind there. But once I take the plastic down and everything, uh, you know, I'm going to wait an extra day after they get done. I think I, I was going to take this down after I got done with my stuff. Um, before Monday, before they come, but you know, the blue tape is designed to uh, not affect your walls and ceilings and stuff. This is flat paint up there. I was a little concerned about whether or not that blue masking tape is going to pull off any of the new paint. This was painted two coats of flat paint at least, oh, I don't know, two, two and a half, three months ago. And I didn't want to leave that up anymore, and I have to. But see, even when I get done with everything I'm doing, after pulling up the plywood, after sweeping up and stuff, that dust is so fine. It can be in the air for, for oh, probably over 24 hours if it's not disturbed before it settles down. And uh, so then we're going to be close to having those guys here. And, and I'll, just take, I'll just take this where they go in and out and I'll fold this back so that they have easy access, you know, from the front door, from the garage, if they're coming in from the garage, what, however they're going to do it. And uh, they uh, can do a straight shot in there. There's plenty, there's plenty of room in here, I think. I mean, I'm not going to pull the plastic down until they get here. In fact, uh, after looking at this, I, I don't know if this is, if this is one piece that they're going to, do here or, or what and um, I may have to undo the plastic to there we'll see we'll see so today's Friday and I'm still gonna have to work on pulling the plywood up I'm still gonna have to work on uh, this uh, backsplash area because I'm gonna put some sheetrock mud on there I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna do that yet um, I'll talk about that in a few minutes, but then um, I can let the dust settle. And by the time I get all done, it's going to be probably Sunday um, because I may have to put two coats on here and, and 
stuff, get this all cleaned up, get things situated, and all that kind of stuff. And so this, this tape on the ceiling is only going to be up there an extra day or so. All right, so I think I'm going to leave it, and then when the guys get here on Monday, I'll ask them if, if they need it pulled down. They may need this section pulled down, you know, from here to maybe there, and maybe we'll leave that little section, because I know once they get their counter in here, he's going to have to drill at least two holes, one for the sink, one, or one for the sink faucet, and one for the, uh, the um, hose pump, you know, the washing what do you want to call it? The soap dispenser. And um, when he drills that, I don't know how much dust that's going to make. And I'm sure that they'll probably have a vacuum system. One guy will be drilling the, the hole. And, and I don't know. You know, they may set it up here and then they may take it back outside and drill the holes outside for all I know. Or he may, if he drills them in here, they might have a, uh, a vacuum attachment and then wipe down the counter afterwards and I don't know how much dust it's going to do and that's another reason why maybe I'll leave this this up but I'll talk to them I'll talk to them when they get here I think before before pulling this uh, plastic down but you know there's no sense for me having to pull this plastic down I don't have to pull that plastic down I don't have to take the uh, the craft paper down along down here in the bottom of the cabinets or anything and I can leave that stuff up and see, on that, I was slick. I used regular masking tape, and I put the masking tape on top of that soffit. That way, if any of the masking tape pulls up any of the paint, I can decide, hey, do I want to touch that up? Do I want to leave it or what? I could have put the masking tape just on the edge of this uh, um, soffit and done it that way. But I thought, no, nah, I don't want to do that. And I could have put it on the cabinets themselves, just barely above the... Uh, um, the cabinet doors or something like that. And I thought, no, in case we need to get in here and get into one of the cabinets, I only have it taped in a couple spots. Boom, boom, boom. I could pull that and then it, we could still open the cabinet doors, let's say, to shimmy through there to get some. But we, but you know what? You think about stuff like that, you never do it. It gets dusty in here and we go out and eat and, and you just make do without, without having to get in here and all that kind of stuff, okay? So one thing after another, just think about different things before you tackle each one. And yes, can you do it yourself and save money? Of course you can. Now see if you do have craft paper and, and uh, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna leave it up there, but I'm gonna go ahead and put masking tape on the top edge of this, you know, around, just kind of like how I did here. That'll protect that, that top edge. And then I did it along, along this too. Oh, yeah. What happened there? Oh, I put the masking tape. Uh, anyways, it, it's it's on there at the top. No, it's not. It's not. I had I had the tape up there prior to taking the uh, that last little bit out. And so I'll have to I'll have to make sure that's all clean. And then I'll put masking tape over that too. Okay. That way I'll just leave all that stuff in place and it will be protected. I'm gonna end up doing that uh, before taking this plywood off too. Yeah, that's what I'll do.